immediate 49ers news. Let's start off with the man himself, Brandon Ayuk, who continues just to ball out. Um, and, you know, he got back the CT scan results. He got injured on the very first drive of the game, came back in two or three times, and was just in and out, in and out, and out. CT scan came back. No muscle, I'm sorry, no bone cracks, whatever, in the shoulder, collarbone, all that stuff, which is the best news. And, you know, whenever one of the first things we would do before I ever did full pads and in the offseason, we repeated this phrase all the time as a coach. What is the difference between injured and being hurt? They're two different things. Injured means you cannot perform your job because your body will not allow you. Hurt and pain makes it uncomfortable to do your job, but you can still do it. And that seems to be where Brandon Ayuk is. Now me, I'm sitting in this comfortable chair at home, chilling. Nobody's trying to rip my head off. Brandon Ayuk is going to have to figure out a balance, and he's the only one that can do this. Short week does not help to make sure you know you can play, and he's going to play. I really do believe Brandon Ayuk will be out there Thursday night. but. Will he receive a full target share? Probably not. Should he? Probably not. Now, if he goes out there and everything's feeling great, no worries. But, man, he got brought down on that same shoulder three separate times. And every single time after it happened, he was slower and slower to get up. And you could just see he was fighting through it. And so the warrior, the Frankenstein that has been created is awesome. But at the same time, he's got to figure out exactly what that pain tolerance is going to be. Good news is it's the Giants, and Giants are not a good football team. They're missing their best player, Saquon, which hurts. Um, Sonia, what's up? Did I see Bell come in for Ayuk on a few plays, mostly for blocking downfield? You sure as heck did. In my notes, Sonia, you are incredible. One of my favorite things about this is I have a whole section of today's show. The 49ers culture permeates. Ronnie Bell, you know, we do so much draft work here. If you're with us in the offseason, you're one of the, the ones that stick around with us the entirety of the offseason. You know we do so much draft work. I liked Ronnie Bell. I never saw Ronnie Bell have one of those all-out blocking games. It just didn't happen. Never did. He was soft blocker. He was not aggressive at all in any of that. But here we are two weeks in. This dude's running around like a Tasmanian devil going hair on fire trying to get these blocks. And then that CMC run right up the middle, man, Ronnie Bell was one of the ones that kind of put that on there. Yeah, he pancaked Witherspoon. Everybody pancaked Witherspoon, including our running back, wide receivers. Witherspoon's garbage, and that's exactly where he got put. He got put in the garbage can. So I love the fact that, you know, Ronnie Bell was there and putting out that effort. One of my favorite clips from the offseason – um, was from Eric Armstead, who is the blueprint of the defense. You heard Steve Wilkes say, here is him talking about the culture of the Niners and just how it's just people are being brought into this, and I love it. I don't know if it's unusual. You know, I've been here, you know, eight years. Uh, so I've seen the, the culture and the, that, um, you know, Kyle and John have built here. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's been like this for a while. Um, you know, we love playing with one another. We have a lot of fun. Um, everybody's happy for each other's success. And, you know, we really don't bring in a lot of guys who, uh, who you know, are the opposite of that, you know, are self-centered and, um, you know, more focused on themselves. And, uh, you know, they do a great job of, you know, who they bring in and add to our culture each year. And, um, you know, the, the main guys who have been here kind of, you know, continue that culture um, each year. But, you know, I think it's not, it's not unusual because I've been, I've been here. I don't know what it's like other places. The longest tenured 49er, Eric Armstead. And so whenever you could bring somebody in like Ronnie Bell, who just didn't block well at the college level. Now here we are, his rookie rookie season, getting lots more snaps than we thought. Danny Gray was going to be that guy. He got injured. Ronnie Bell stepped in, and he's doing his job. Now is he making plays with the receiver? That's going to come. But I think Kyle Shanahan has shown, if you block as a wide receiver, you can get snaps. If you can only catch as a wide receiver and not block, you're not playing for us. So, like, you have to be able to block before you get any snaps whatsoever. No block, no rock, right? And so I love seeing the young pup get out there and establish that he belongs. 
Um, yeah, right there. Uh, Team Cali says Bell took out two defensive backs blocking for Debo too. Yeah, it was consistent. And, you know, blocking is about effort first and foremost and mindset second. Ronnie Bell's efforts level 100. Never saw that in college. So something changed, and I love to see it. You know, Danny Gray didn't get many snaps last year because Brandon Ayuk led the team, um, all the skill position players, in snaps last year. Ayuk was healthy the whole year. Now Ronnie Bell is the backup to Brandon Ayuk. You got Ray Ray's the backup to Debo, and Juwan Jennings just doing Juwan Jennings things. So it's interesting because if, and this is a big if, if Ayuk does miss time this, this week, with it being a short week, I, I don't think Juwan Jennings is going to take over that backup role. I think it's going to continue to be Ronnie Bell who's been there, and I think they trust him because of what he does in the blocking game. So the shout-out to Bell. Love that pick. Love that we were able to keep all of our, you know, draft picks this year. We didn't lose one. That's huge. But we did lose somebody that was near and dear to my heart um, this week. And this is this is part of being the Niners. Quantrez Knight um, got picked up on the roster by the Arizona Cardinals. I really felt like the Niners missed this one. I love the Niners. And I, I think that they should. I, I was preaching on the show. Should have elevated Q Knight last week. You had the opportunity Q Knight could have went to Arizona um, after the roster thing. They put in a waiver claim, but it wasn't a priority, so they claimed somebody over him. So Arizona's been wanting to get him. Arizona offered him a practice squad spot. He said, nope, I'm going back to the Niners. Niners had an opportunity, lost a DB, could have elevated him. Niners didn't. They chose Trey Swelling, um, which shout out to Trey Swelling. Happy for him. But Niners lost this player, uh, make no mistake. And whatever it is, they didn't like what he had to offer. They liked him, but not enough to give him the opportunity. Now he's going to get that opportunity. We're probably going to be playing against him next week. Um, <laughs> Kevin says, man, I thought of you instantly when I saw the Q Night news. You know, I had two prized undrafted free agents last year that I just fell absolutely in love with going through their film. Q Knight and Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason hit early. Um Q Knight, I thought belonged. I really, really did. We missed it. This year, Deshaun Jameson was everything. Jack Coletto was everything. We lost out on Jameson. We still got Coletto on the, the practice squad, so we'll see what that looks like. But, you know, it just hurts because you, you invest so much time. You know, we do full episodes on every player in the offseason, our countdown and all that stuff. You get to know these players. You go to training camp and you get the interactions and you see how he fits the team culture. I right? just showed team culture. Quantrez Knight was perfect for that, but he's gone now. I was a big Trey Lance guy. He's gone now. So we, you know, you, you take it for what it is, but we're Niners first. That's who we are. Does it hurt a little bit? Yeah. Do I still love DeForest Buckner? You bet your ass I do. And, you know, I'm going to pull for those guys, I'm going to follow them. But uh, not when they're going against us and not any of those things. So I, I wish him the best and I hope he gets it figured out because he's such a good dude and he belongs in the NFL. But sadly for us at this time, there you go, Big Papa. We will miss him, but glad he's getting the money being on the 53. Man, I thank you, Big Papa. You know, we talk about the culture of the Niners. Big Papa, you fit the culture of this 49ers Rush podcast, man. Um, celebrate other successes is paramount and living a happy life. And so, yeah, it's not with us. That hurts, but uh, good luck to him. Uh, the 49ers Rush Podcast.